The ancestral way of living is becoming more popular. It's kind of a variation of carnivore, a variation of keto, but really living super close to the earth. We're also implementing fruits. I am in beautiful Kona, Hawaii right now. We're gonna head on into Costco and we're gonna do an ancestral haul. So it's gonna look a lot like a keto haul, but without any of the processed stuff. And I don't know, how you might live a little bit closer to the earth. So what you would find in sort of a hunter-gatherer sort of sense and doing keto in that fashion. Almost sort of a keto-vore, where it's like a variation of carnivore, but you're implementing some other optimization tactics to get the most out of it without going completely animal-based, but also not being one direction or the other. So let's head on in and I've got a cool surprise for you later on in this video someone that you probably know and recognize is going to join me and we're going to shop together so it's going to be a nice little treat let's head into costco i've never been to this costco before but it seems clean it seems quieter than a california costco and shoot so the cool thing is with like sort of an ancestral way it's actually pretty easy to shop. Like you're really just living as close to the earth as you possibly can, but you're eliminating some of the things that might be, I don't want to say inflammatory, but things that just would be refined, things that would involve a lot of processing. So it doesn't mean that you can't have fruits. It doesn't mean that you can't have carbohydrates. It just means that you're limiting those that would be inaccessible. So think paleo to the extreme but sort of optimizing it with what we know now works really well for a keto diet. Still on sale over here. Those echelon, yeah, those echelon bikes are awesome, by the way. I have one of those, never thought that I'd use one of those. All right, I actually am gonna start off with something that is so unusual for this channel, because usually I'm talking just a low carb lifestyle. I did a video where I specifically talked about grapefruit not that long ago. It, grapefruit not only has components in it that slowed down digestion of carbohydrates, but it is one of the lowest carbohydrate fruits that you could possibly have. Okay, so you've got components in there that help with what's called amylase inhibition, the breakdown of carbohydrates, so it slows down the breakdown. So in essence, the carbohydrates that you get out of a grapefruit, which by the way is like between four and eight, depending on the size of the grapefruit, so a whole grapefruit might have as little as eight grams of net carbohydrates, lots of fiber in them, and honestly, a pretty good taste. Now, it wouldn't be full-on, quote-unquote, ancestral to add, say, like stevia or monk fruit to it, but just a hot tip for those of you that like grapefruit and like the benefits of grapefruit, if you were to take grapefruit and sprinkle this a tiny bit of stevia or a tiny bit of monk fruit powder on the top of it and then put it under the broiler, oh my gosh, it tastes so good and it cuts that bitterness really, really well. So I wanted to make sure I mentioned this. I'm staying here for about another week and I don't think I need a bunch of grapefruits, but this is definitely something that would make the ancestral hall and something that I think is a really good find. Now, just as an educational component to let you know, a true ancestral way of living in a keto divorce kind of sense would imply that you really should only eat what's in season with where you are, right? But we also have to optimize to get us the best outcome. So let's say I'm in an area where I might only have papayas and mangoes. Does that mean I only eat papayas and mangoes? If I was trying to live in a super close to the earth fashion, then yes, so that's the extreme sense. But I know that I get some benefits from some fruits and some vegetables that might come from other regions. So I'm gonna use my brain and modern technology and modern logistics to eat those, right? It's how do we optimize and get the most out of this ancestral way, okay, if that makes sense? Anyhow, let's keep going. Now a big part of the ancestral diet as well is less about the diet and more about the timing. You see, we would go through periods of fasting and feasting, which I talk about a lot on my channel in a very biochemical sense all the time. But fasting and feasting, where we'd go periods of time in which we'd be active, we'd be hunting, we'd be moving, we'd be gathering. We're not always hunting, remember? Sometimes we take what we can get, we gather and we pick. And that might take all day until we get a chance to eat. So the occasional 24 hour fast, the occasional 36 hour fast, all while really bombarding our body with those nutrients after that period is done. So what about things like potatoes? What about things like uh, purple sweet potato that's gonna be here in uh, Hawaii? 
one of the best forms of resistant starches that you could possibly eat. So because I'm here in Hawaii and because it's a local thing, I'm gonna grab some of this. This might not be something that would fit into a normal ancestral diet, but I feel like this is exactly what would fit in my kind of ancestral diet. It's Hawaii grown, it's native to this area, so if I was able to grab one out of the ground, I wouldn't eat it raw. I would probably find a way to boil it, cook it, and the cool thing is it's a resistant starch. So even though it's still has a fair amount of, can't see it, yeah, look at it, still have uh, one serving, a 100 gram serving is going to have 26 grams of carbohydrates and only four grams of fiber. That's pretty hefty on the carbs. But the nice thing is it is a resistant starch, okay? So the digestion is very interesting and the fermentation process in the body is very interesting. And some of the carotenoids, some of the flavonoids you get out of the purple sweet potato make it really cool. Plus my kiddos love these, so I'm gonna grab that. And a hot tip for purple sweet potatoes or sweet potatoes at all, heat them and then cool them. They become what's called a retrograded starch. This is super cool because this makes it so that the starch chains actually come back together and it becomes a slower digesting starch even more. So you heat it and then cool it and then eat it cool. It's pretty neat. We have papaya, okay. Now papaya, this is a great price on papaya, even for Hawaii, by the way. We're talking less than a couple bucks each. The problem with Hawaii, or <laughs> the problem with papaya is that it is a higher glucose to fructose ratio. If you were trying to go really, let's say smart with the ancestral diet, you wanna to try to get as close to like a high fructose content as you want. Why? Well, fructose does not spike insulin like glucose does. So if you're doing lower carb, you would want slightly more in the way of fructose, not meaning you wanna eat a ton of it, but if you had to look at equal amounts of fructose or glucose, I would opt for the fructose. Less of an insulin spike. A less insulin spike means it's not going to stop the liver from producing ketones because insulin is what stands in the way of that and that is called ketogenesis. So, but I love papaya and I love the taste and I love the carotenoids in it that give it that orange coloring. The nice thing about papaya, you can actually eat the seeds too. So I would consider it absolutely something ancestral. Uh, and again, given to the local territory, I'm just trying to find one that's a little bit. This one looks okay. Papaya is ripened up really fast. So I wouldn't recommend having more than like a quarter to a half of papaya at once and try to couple it with some protein so it attenuates the glucose spike. Okay, cool evidence that when you have protein alongside glucose like that, it can attenuate that glucose spike, making it so you're not getting nearly as big of a, an overall spike. Oh man, I don't know what I would do with this much ginger, but this is cool. Like this is an, an, another local find. This is awesome, grown in Hawaii right here. Again, I always try to find stuff that is somewhat local. This is super cool. The reason I like ginger, there's some stuff in there called six shogal. Now, if you look at the research behind ginger, there's evidence of it elevating what's called AMPK. So remember how I talked about fasting and how fasting is really important during this whole ancestral kind of style of diet? Well, ginger can help upregulate the kind of the, I guess the cellular process of fasting in a lot of ways by driving up AMPK. Doesn't mean you eat ginger during a fast, but sipping on some ginger tea, stuff like that could be good. I always love cooking with ginger. There's good evidence as far as digestive benefit goes. So again, if you're going a long period of time without eating, and then you're going all of a sudden having a bunch of food, ginger could be very, very good for that. There's no way in heck I'm gonna go through all this ginger in another week, uh, but I just wanna say, this would be something that I would definitely recommend having, and something that, again, you might find if you were just foraging. Onions are another thing, by the way. So, again, I'm not gonna get an 11 pound bag of onions, but I really do think that this is a tremendous food. What it is, is a prebiotic fiber. Okay, so that means that it is a type of fiber that will break down in the gut and really feed the gut microbiome. So if you're not eating a ton of vegetables and you're really leaning into small amounts of fruit, higher amounts of meat and fat, then heck yes, this is the great kind of thing for you because this is going to get you a lot of bang for the buck. Um, maybe you've heard of that guy Liver King that's out on like Instagram a lot. He's got a huge following surrounding sort of this ancestral lifestyle. He makes like a salsa with onion, garlic, tomatoes to try to get the most out of that fermented effect. So onions, kind of great to add to something like that. Make a kimchi, make a salsa, and you get the probiotic, prebiotic effect with very minimal stuff. Additionally, garlic. The garlic not only is going to have tremendous anti-inflammatory, antioxidant properties, uh, even antimicrobial properties, it's again, one of those things that's a very strong fermentable food. Okay, so something that you use as a prebiotic fiber, such a value here. And like all these things that I'm talking about getting are so inexpensive. Again, I don't think I have a use for uh, this much garlic, but I think I'm gonna get it just as a matter of principle and maybe I'll give it to the surprise guest that's gonna hop in here pretty soon. Because I think that that's a very important thing. 
If you are trying to live close to the earth as well, the cool thing is there's a company called Thrive Market and that link down below actually saves you 40% off your entire first grocery order. So 40% off your literal entire first grocery order. And they are an online membership-based grocery store. So they have perishable items, they have non-perishable items, they have things you can stock your pantry with, and they do all the vetting so they get good products on their shelves. They even have sustainable meat and seafood options. They have all kinds of things. So you can literally even get refrigerated things shipped to your doorstep from them. So if you're trying to live close to the earth, you're trying to get, it's easy to sort. So you can go on Thrive Market and be like, I don't want any preservatives. I don't want sugar. I don't want gluten. I don't want, and it will actually fine tune your shopping experience based upon that. It's changed my life, especially having kids, being able to do it really quick and easy online. And then in one or two days, three days tops, it's at my door and that's it. Then I unbox, I've got everything there. I can stock my freezer, I can stock my fridge, and most of all, I can stock my pantry. So again, that link down below, because they are a sponsor on this channel, gets you 40% off, plus also gets you a free gift. Okay, so check that link out down below in the description after this video. Funny enough, uh, I used to rain on the Apple Parade a lot, actually. There's a lot of things that I've changed or softened my stance on as I get to know the research more and as I evolve in sort of my way of thinking for longevity versus maybe just looking a certain way. Um, apples are actually a pretty decent fructose content. So believe it or not, even though they are very condensed and very saturated with carbohydrates, a good portion of it is fructose. So actually a decent fruit to have. Um, the problem is, they are so dense when it comes to carbohydrates that ends up posing an issue there. So like a half an apple gets you, you know, 20 grams of carbohydrates that adds up pretty quick. So because of that, I'm going to stay away from them. And then we get into the other side. Kiwis have tremendous benefit, but again, very high glucose content with kiwis. So kiwis might be something that you want to have maybe after you had a tough workout or kiwis could be something that you have with maybe a post uh, fasting meal that's getting you a little bit more in the way of the carbohydrates there. But actually, believe it or not, there's not a ton of benefit you get from kiwis as much as I love them. Speaking of fasting, uh, at the time of release, this video is probably coming surrounding like Ramadan time. Now, whether you are uh, Muslim or not, it's something to still think about because a lot of times dates are used in fasting practices regardless of religious purposes. The thing that I concern people or I caution people with is when you're breaking a fast, I don't recommend consuming a bunch of dates because it's a pretty hefty insulin spike, okay? And what happens if you have this insulin spike right when you break a fast is you have this mass, it's called refeeding syndrome, and basically you have an electrolyte gradient to make very, very simple. All the potassium, magnesium, sodium that's in your bloodstream can rush into the cell very fast because of an insulin spike, leaving you to feel lightheaded and sort of demineralized within the bloodstream for a period of time. And if you've been fasting for more than say 24 hours, this could pose a problem. You might get lightheaded, you may even pass out. So it's not good to have a big glucose spike. It's okay to bring these things in a little bit later. That's just word for the wise, uh, especially for people that are fasting during the time of Ramadan, because I know it's popular. So just be cautious. You know what I like about this area is, man, the produce section is filled with people. Like that's kind of rare. Oh my gosh, now this is my jam. This is one of the most potent, potent cruciferous vegetables. Now a cruciferous vegetable, you might recognize something more like broccoli or cauliflower or something like that. But baby bok choy is a very concentrated cruciferous, which means it's rich in some fancy things called indole 3 carbonyl and diendole methane. These are very, very good estrogen modulators. Cruciferous vegetables are also rich in generally sulforaphane, which has powerful antioxidant properties as well. Bok choy, I just really like the taste of. And again, it's one of those things where, okay, if you were foraging, this could be something that grows in sort of a bulb form where you get maximum nutrient density without a ton of um, just extra waste or phytic acid or, because that's one of the concerns that a lot of people within like the carnivore community have or anything like that is they'll be like, oh, vegetables have phytic acids. They have oxalates, things that inhibit the digestion or inhibit the absorption of valuable fat soluble mineral uh, vitamins and water soluble minerals. The cool thing is with bok choy, you're looking at a pretty limited amount of that. So in the world of vegetables, if we had to demonize vegetables, which I don't recommend, <laughs> don't demonize them, this is one of the least that you could demonize. Like you can't really get mad at bok choy. I don't know if I have a purpose for one, two, three, four, six bulbs of it um, or more, however many are in here, 
but I just wanted to point this out. I've never seen this at Costco before, and I think this is a newer item, so heck yes. Very big in a lot of um, you know Eastern cultures and things like that. Bang, bang for the buck as far as vegetables go. That bok choy and also asparagus. Okay, so you're rich in long chain inulin, which is a very, very cool kind of fiber that ferments slowly. So if again, if trying to get the benefit of the vegetables with having a small amount of them, you can get away with having a three or four stalks and really get a powerful effect there. I'm gonna get some asparagus. I love me some asparagus here. Carrots are a little bit of a trap. Very high glycemic, uh, very rich in glucose without you have the um, beta carotene, that carotenoid, which can be good for a number of different things, but not worth the, uh, the juice is not worth the squeeze, so to speak. Now broccoli, that's a good price on broccoli, for sure. It's one that people might say, okay, well, you've got what's called raffinose in broccoli, which is a sugar that doesn't digest, but once you cook it, it does break down. Now, I've got some words to say. I'm not gonna pick that up right now because again, I've got plenty of broccoli. Okay, this is what I'm big on. Okay, peppers, I think, fit into an ancestral diet very well. In their raw form, they still don't have a lot of oxalates or anti-nutrients in them. And in their cooked form, you activate other components and you get things what are called uh, capsaicin or capsaicin potato potato, which is very, very good on multiple different levels. Okay, capsaicin can actually have a benefit when it comes down to what are called catecholamines. So you get a benefit with a little bit of an adrenaline spike and you essentially get a little more lipolysis, potential fat burning that comes as a result of that. Plus, it's a really good price. Seven bucks for this whole bag of them. And I could put this in the salsa like I talked about, along with my prebiotics, with the garlic, with the onion, with the tomatoes. And I could also just straight up eat them raw. So it's perfect. Now it's funny because when you're looking at carnivore, ketovore, ancestral kind of eating, you, you hear a lot of flack in the whole produce world altogether. But when it comes down to foraging, when it comes down to anything of like that, one of the things that probably was forged the most, good, bad, ugly, psychedelic or not, would be the world of mushrooms. Okay, so in this case, we have a lot to choose from, and I am not a fungal specialist, whatever you wanna call that, but I'm a big fan of portobellas. So again, something like if I was out foraging or looking for things, mushrooms would be something that I would probably find, and you're gonna find just about any time of the year in different kind of environments. So let's grab some portobellas, because here's what we're gonna get out of it. We're gonna get beta-glucans, which are tremendous, again, bang for the buck when it comes to fiber, but we're also going to get uh, some really cool effects in the way of what's called vitamin D2, which does convert into vitamin D3. People think D2 coming from plants, it's not that bad, but vitamin D2 converts into D3 and is almost, well, I should say almost just as good as D3, but as far as what it does in the body, it's going to get there. It's still gonna convert into D3, you just need more of it. So in theory, you're getting enough vitamin D because ancestral living, you're out in the sun, you're getting lots of uh, animal products, getting that vitamin D in. But anyway, now we're into my favorite fruits here, raspberries. Pricey, because we're here in Hawaii, um, but two things, that one's a little moldy, two things we have to know with raspberries. Okay, A, they're super low glycemic. Okay, so one of the lowest glycemic, lowest sugar content fruits that you could possibly eat, super high in fiber, low in carbohydrates overall. But they also have that same anti-amylase. So they have an amylase inhibitor, which slows down the actual absorption of the carbohydrates themselves. So at a digestive level, we're not absorbing as many carbohydrates. So this is cool, blackberries are close too. Now, I don't recommend you go totally crazy when you eat these, but, oh, ooh, beets? Sorry, I saw the beets there, but huh. that's a little bit expensive for blackberries, but I'm gonna get some too, just because I'm a big fan of them. And again, if you were in a survival situation, if you came across a big bunch of berries, it's probably likely that you would just sit there and eat everything off of that bush. So if you're gonna just completely go ham on berries, you might as well go ham on the berries that are pretty low in the way of sugar content. Sorry, it's getting busy in here. I'm stoked on how this cart is looking. This is how a true cart should look. Now, if you look at some of the people like Liver King, things like that, he's really talking about eating raw meat. I don't wanna necessarily comment on whether that's good, bad, or ugly, but what I do wanna say is that we have certainly evolved as humans over the last couple hundred years at least, or probably, thousand to get better at utilizing cooked foods. I would argue that we are what is called a cookivore. We are the only species, think about it, that actually cooks our food, which means that we have the ability to extract nutrients that maybe 
another species wouldn't. Maybe that's why we have been able to have advancements that other species haven't. I don't know, that's speaking out of the side of my mouth, but it's just a thought. Because there's a lot of nutrients that don't get extracted out of foods unless we cook them. And there's also a lot of anti-nutrients, things that block nutrients that don't get broken down unless we are cooking them. So in this case, I'm gonna get some of this stuff, this organic ground beef, which I think is just a good bang for the buck, $22.99 for that. So a lot, a lot of people shy away from the, like the fattier cuts of meat, things like that, which I am typically a fan of getting leaner cuts and then adding fats from other fat sources. In the sake of the world of like ketovore or some sort of ancestral style, sometimes you gotta take what you can get, right? Eating all cuts of meat to try to really maximize what you're getting out of it and getting collagen and everything like that. But again, we also have to optimize for what we have right now. In this case, I love the fact that this has a fair bit of fat in it. It's an 85% lean, but you know, it's mostly going to be coming in the way of uh, palmitic acid and a little bit of steric acid as far as saturated fats go. I would prefer to cook it a little bit leaner and get my fats from other sources. One of my favorite fat sources on any kind of dietary protocol is going to be good old avocados. Now, $11 for these avocados when I know they're growing just about on every tree on every street corner here in Hawaii. Seems like a little bit of highway robbery, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna get them. This one looks like it's gonna expire in about 10 minutes, and this one looks like it's gonna be hard in about three weeks, or ready in about three weeks. This batch looks good. Uh, yeah, go with that one. So what I would prefer to do is get a leaner cut of meat, add my fats through avocado oil, through avocados, things like that. But let's see what kind of fish they have here. I think if I had to, if I had to craft like the perfect diet, it would be a Mediterranean island style keto type of diet. I think that's what I would say, because why? Lots of fish, I eat tons of pokey, I eat tons of raw fish, I eat tons of sushi grade fish, and I eat a bunch of fruits when I'm in the mode for it, I eat a bunch of vegetables, and I eat a bunch of like avocados and good healthy fats that are also coming from omega-3s, like the fish that I'm eating. So that's like my perfect strategy. But again, we have to live with what we've got. So here, let's see, we've got some fresh ahi, which would be great, pretty pricey though. Some mahi-mahi that's probably Let's see, product of USA, who knows if it's super local or not. That's blue marlin, which would be nice. Uh, some black cod, and then some of my favorite scallops. Hey, it looks like my buddy's just about here. So we've got a cool surprise coming in just a moment. You guys are hopefully gonna recognize this guy. Lives here in Kona, and you might know who I'm talking about already. So the thing about uh, like shellfish, generally easier to catch, right? You could go get sc uh, scallops, you could go get um, mussels, you could go get clams. And the protein bang for the buck is great. The amino acid profile is tremendous. The mineral profile, especially on a lower carb protocol, is even better. So things like, like zinc, things like selenium that you're gonna get out of these foods that you might not get out of other foods. This again is a pricey price to pay here. So I might say there's frozen ones over there that you know for me, making this practical might be more realistic. Uh, I also like shrimp, the same kind of category. And then we have like fresh Atlantic salmon here. Oh, this is steelhead. Same kind of thing. I'd wanna go for more of like the sockeye. But again, if I was trying to find what's local to my area, I'd probably go with some ahi, which is a tremendous fish as well. You don't have to worry about uh, super high amounts of mercury if you're not eating it all the time. And here's someone that you guys might recognize that's coming to crash the party. What's up, man? Aloha, welcome to Hawaii. Thanks, man. <laughs> you guys might recognize this guy, Drew Manning. Love you guys. Fit to fat to fit. The guy's done some pretty amazing stuff when it comes down to making himself obese and then fit again. <laughs> so Drew Drew lives here, so yeah. Drew knows what's up. Welcome, man. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of good food here in Hawaii, a lot of keto-friendly food. Uh, but also just, I mean, you can't, I don't know if you sell the, if you see this on the no. mainland. So but you, don't see, you don't see like black cod and a whole, oh, the whole fish. Yeah. So, and that's local around here too? Seafood. Yeah. And then actually it's probably not. Actually, I don't know. Okay. No, everything from Costco is usually from the mainland to be honest with you. Yeah. That would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of it's farm raised though. You gotta, you gotta look out for that. Wild caught. Totally. Are you more of a fan of wild caught? Oh yeah, for sure. Like this is a super yeah. good price on wild. Dude. Look at this. Boom. So, Pearls for the gold, right? right there. <laughs> One thing you told me, you uh, yeah. actually picked some up today. Okay, so what gives this the red pigment is something called astaxanthin. And you were oh, telling yeah. me, I literally picked some up today. Yeah. So I you saw said, that. That, like, that's like grown, like. Here locally. Yeah. yeah, the local company has an algae farm where they make the astaxanthin and the spirulina. Nice. And so they make it here locally. It's one of the few places on the earth 
where the climate is perfect all year round, where they can produce this all year round because That's of awesome. how perfect the temperature is. That's yeah. awesome. So, and the astaxanthin is what gives it the red pigment, yeah. but it's also the antioxidant. So like when a salmon is swimming upstream, for example, it's the astaxanthin that is protecting them from all the stress of such an intense activity. Yeah. So taking like a concentrated astaxanthin in supplement form or eating a good fish like this is really cool. But yeah. that's awesome, it's a good and A point. lot of people use it out here, triathletes, Ironman athletes, they'll use it to protect their skin from the sun. That's a good point. Yeah, so all the athletes use that out here. Crabs, obviously not local. I've seen some crabs around here, but they're little, little teeny ones. They're yeah. Uh, Look how big these ones are. Oh, farm raised, of course, dude. Like these bad yeah. boys. Huge. Even here. At least these frozen sea salads. Yeah. So compared to the price over there, those were actually what? Seventy bucks. <laughs> yeah, dude. This actually might even be more expensive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's Hawaii. Like, it's Hawaii. Everything's, yeah, everything's more expensive out here. Crazy. Yeah. But again, with like the purpose of trying to, you know, live with what you could forage for, what you could gather, what yeah. you could, you know, essentially hunt and eat. That's kind of what we're going for. So I was yeah. kind of explaining right before you popped in is that like shellfish is a great strategy for that. You know, it's easier to get in a lot of ways. Um, anyway, let's just keep on rocking and see yeah. what other meats they got. So you got cage-free, um, organic. Um, oh yeah, that's cage. That might be, no, those are chicken thighs. So I guess in the spirit of yeah. Again, like the ancestral piece, get whatever you can get. If you get the fats out of the chicken, fine. Yeah. But if I had it my way to do it perfectly, I would say go with a leaner breast and add the fats from the avocado, add the fats yeah. from something that we'll talk about in a little bit, macadamia nuts. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Actually, good. I learned that from you. That's kind of what I've shifted over. And my body feels actually a lot better doing that, where I eat more lean meats and I, I kind of add in my own fat when I want to. And I feel like, for me, I feel like that's a better approach. Yes. And I learned that from you, so. You, you can control it better, right? Yeah. So it's like, if I were to have, let's say one chicken thigh and have six ounces of chicken thigh, yeah. I might have 20 grams of fat, I might have 35. Yeah. Who knows, right? Yeah, yeah. It's hard to tell just by looking at it. If I have a lean chicken breast, the delta is just like, I might have four grams of fat, or I might have six, right? It's yeah. like way less risk yeah. in terms of, because the calories add up so much. So Same it's like, calories per gram. Yeah. yeah. And it's, so in this case, um, you know, being that I'm not here for a long time, I don't know if I want to get, you know, another $30 worth of chicken, <laughs> but this organic chicken breast that they have at Costco, no matter where you are, would totally fit the profile for that. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Any of the sausages or, no. This one's, a, this one's an interesting one because just yeah. by, have you tried this one? I have, yeah, it's really good. <laughs> just by definition, you know, if you're looking quote unquote ancestral, yeah, and it says paleo, that's kind of like what ancestral is. It's basically paleo. Yeah, so there's no added sugar, right? Chicken, basil. Yeah, there's no added sugar. Roasted garlic, onion powder, garlic powder, sea salt, vinegar, black pepper, calcium agent casing is the only thing that could be questionable. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's pretty awesome. I'd actually totally get this. Oh, yeah. One thing I've noticed, obviously, here on the island, like Kalua pork, lots of pork. Um, yes. Which, believe it or not, like people people bag on pork. Pork has the highest monounsaturated fat content of any meat that I know of. Wow. And yeah. monounsaturated fats are pretty darn good. Like saturated fats can be in question. Yeah, yeah. Polyunsaturated fats uh, destabilize very fast, and monounsaturated fats are more stable and generally are pretty heart healthy. And it's kind of funny because certain cuts of pork are gonna be higher saturated fat, but like yeah. a good pork chop or a good pork loin, actually pretty decent, good fatty acid profile. Yeah, yeah. The Kahlua pork though, that's really good out here. That's a pork, pork shoulder or pork butt. So it's gonna be a lot of fat content mostly. Of fat. That's why it tastes so good. If you come out here, it's definitely worth trying. Uh, the Kahlua pork. Totally. Yeah, right. it's so good. Yeah, it's definitely, it's usually swimming in, in oil. And <laughs> if you get it at a restaurant, I got yeah. it at that, that place where we got that omelet and it's like, it's almost like they cook it additionally yeah. in more so oil. So you gotta be careful. Yeah. So, and then a lot of times they, uh, I've noticed a lot of it has a sweet taste, like they add some sugar into that too. Oh yeah. So you're kind of having the worst of both worlds, like a high poor quality fat and a high sugar content. Yeah. Some of the stuff that Drew and I were talking about this morning, uh, you know, we've both sort of evolved in our way of keto thinking where it's like applying keto where it works, being able to have things like fruits, having a little bit of flexibility within your diet so that you're optimizing for both. And I think it's just perfect that 
Yeah, I think that's cool that you can change, you can evolve, you don't need to stay stuck in your ways for 10 years because what works for you today might not work for you a year from now, two years from now. So it's good to be, um, to experiment. And the, really the end goal is metabolic flexibility, right? Totally. Like it's cool to be efficient running off ketones, but that's not the end all be all for everything and for everyone. I think most humans were designed to be metabolically flexible. Totally. And so it's it's good to teach your body, uh, you know, how to run efficiently off of both sources of fuel, you uh, know? 100%, man. So so yeah, it's good. I, I don't. I, I, I when people speak in absolutes, like this is the, the the only way to eat for the rest of your life. Like, I feel like that's kind. Of, you put you get stuck in a you pigeonhole yourself, and um, I feel like there's an opportunity for growth or, or to evolve from that. Yeah, know? and you might you you close yourself off to maybe shifting your way of thinking. Yeah, because you're married to one particular way, and something like keto, which has tremendous benefits and is yeah. very powerful. It's easy to just get stuck with that, but it should be a tool, a valuable tool in your toolbox that yeah. we can leverage to get better results in other yeah. places. And yeah. I, for one, especially someone that's focused on um, you know, being able to be active and things like that, I'm focused more on longevity more than anything now. Yeah. And maybe it's just as I'm getting older and as Having I'm kids kind of growing, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like, keto is great for that, but there's also a strong argument that a Mediterranean approach is good for that. And so I try to take bits and pieces from all of it, and I feel like where you land is, hey, living close to the earth. Yeah. Like, it's the refined stuff. It's the stuff that's you know contributing to insulin resistance. That's the problem. Yeah. It's not. It's not these. Yeah. These aren't the problem. Yeah. Know? It's not the it, carbs in those. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I know the processed food world really well because I, I ate it for six months and gained 75 pounds on it. So yeah, I, I know that world really well. <laughs> that's right. So Drew really made his name doing that. Like, yeah, yeah. he gained done it twice. twice. Yeah, twice now. So. 2011 and 2020, I survived, but I learned a lot of valuable lessons from it. I will say, like, I, I, I don't think I'll ever do it again, but I did learn some valuable lessons from that experiment. And, but I'm glad it's done. I'm, yeah. glad, I'm glad I can move past it. You look a lot better too. Yeah. But <laughs> better. not that that's the I goal. But you didn't look. You didn't look like you felt very good. You yeah. were. You no, were gray. You saw you were, me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I saw you when you were about like. Uh, oh, that's right. Maybe like 20 pounds. Yeah, in. you were like a month or so in, and you were just like. Uh, Fluffy. Yeah, you were breathing heavily <laughs> walking to the grocery store, and yeah. 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 Oh, these okay. are. Here's something that. Yeah. These pickles. Have you had these pickles? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dude, I love those ones. This could it's a good brand. Yeah, it's cucumbers. It's brine water, which is just water, vinegar, salt. This is totally something, again, ancestral way. Like, how would we live a thousand years ago? The way that you would preserve things is by pickling them. So this is absolutely something that's good. Um, are you going to get a lot of nutritional value out of it? No. No. It's, it's more just something that might give you some of that mineral balance, but I do like, what I like to do is I like to eat the little chunks of garlic. Yeah, me too, me so, too. And I'll drink the pickle juice too, like after a hard workout or sweating out here in Hawaii, like you sweat a lot. Yeah, you it's know? perfect. So I, I love the pickle juice. My son loves those things yeah. too. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you know what? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, what is this? Though? Beef sticks, I think, but I don't know if it's 100% paleo. Let me see. Let's see. No nitrates or nitrates. Gluten-free, beef, water, sea salt, celery powder, vinegar, garlic. Na so the natural flavors could get us on that, right? Yeah. Uh, you don't know what that it is. Yeah, and we talk about this in videos a lot, but when uh, uh, the natural flavors, 150 different incidental additives. Yeah. So that means that it could be one of 150 things, ranging from good, bad, I don't know, or whatever, all under one label. Yeah. So whether a company, a company could be trying to do the right thing by putting a, a true natural flavor in, and it's going to get roped in under the same category as someone that's using something completely artificial yeah. that is in that category. Yeah. So it's a huge question mark. Yeah. Um, have you tried these before though? Yeah, I have. Yeah. They used to have turkey ones too that were really good, that were less fat, but keto friendly uh, as far as that goes. But if you're going for ancestral, yeah, you get, there's, that's what the hard part, splitting hairs, like what's, what's ancestral, what's not. So it's good that you're doing this video to educate people. Like I would have looked at that and would have been like, oh, it looks pretty good. The natural flavors thing, that's one thing you, you know, you get, it's something I think newer you got to look into because yeah. people just assume natural flavors, that can't be bad, right? But it's cool that you've broken that down for people. A lot of times, and I've done it multiple times, if you yeah. reach out to the companies and ask them what natural flavor they're using, a lot of times they will tell you. Yeah. Uh, and if they're open about it, they, they'll tell you. A lot of times if they don't reply. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will say I'm a big fan of Beats and that's a super good price on Beats because they're on oh, wow. sale right now. 
uh, even when I'm full force keto, trying to keep ketones high, I can get away with having like one or two beats and still be back in ketosis in like 40 minutes after a workout. Oh, yeah. Because the carb content isn't super high. Yeah. But I really just dig. Have you ever done uh, like beets before or even beet juice, like pre-workout yes. kind of yeah. thing? Yeah, the nitric oxide effect. Yes, it's, um, it's legit. Yeah. No, it's very legit. Oh, here's, here's actually, this makes my videos all the time. Have you had this stuff? Yes, my girls love that. <laughs> Dude, this stuff is so cool. Have you, yeah. check this out. Where's the ingredients on this bad boy? Oh, right there. Pork salt. Pork and salt. Yeah. So ancestral, again, what would they do? They'd, they might catch a pig or something every three weeks. And what are they gonna do? They're gonna hang dry it, right? So I'm super down with this. Can I get that? Uh, What's next for you, man? What are you, what are you, what are you doing next? Man, you know, I, ever since I moved here less than a year ago, I'm still getting, I feel like I'm still getting settled in. Yeah. But um, 2022 has been a year of like, so far, like things have been opening up. I'm doing a lot more traveling, a lot more speaking yeah. events. And I'm hoping to go into some some kind of seminars this year. I haven't been to a, a, like a, a seminar in I don't know how long. But, um, you know, just getting settled out here with my kids and, uh, you know, um, we'll see as far as like another experiment. Uh, nothing to announce just yet, but I might have some things in the work for in the near future, not nice. anytime soon, but because I just did fit to fat to fit last year. Like it was just like a year ago that I was yeah. doing Yeah, it takes some time to mentally recover from that. That's a, that's a serious undertaking. Oh yeah, and physically too, and physically too, yeah. Um, Jesus, yeah, we're in the obviously cheese no-go, right? Well, so here's the thing, like, I don't know what Costco has. I have recently become more of a fan of like some of the raw cheeses and things like that. I don't know what Costco has in the way of that. Is cheese something that you would, uh, get having an ancestral diet yeah possibly i tend to lean towards like goat cheese just because different casein types so it's easier for it to break down it's easier to assimilate the proteins uh know what's called a uh, bcm7 in it that stuff i have seen anything you would want to get in the way of cheese you'd want to get aged yeah pastured cow's milk salt starter culture microbial rennet i don't know what microbial rennet is but yeah, that's basically just what they're using to culture it. Yeah. Um, this one's rugged and mature. Yeah, you know, sounds interesting. <laughs> rugged and mature. Sounds like a, I'm rugged but immature. So yeah. Um, yeah. I know plenty of people that are mature but not rugged. So with this, I'd probably go with just a safe bet is the goat cheese. We take yeah. a quick scan, see if there's any like raw cheese. Costco from liability reasons may not sell anything raw. Yeah, yeah probably not. Uh, there's a uh, company called, is it Dutch Farms? The, the video that I did, I did a video with Noah Syndergaard, the pitcher for the Angels, yeah. and he gets all his like meats and uh, dairy like shipped in from Amish really? farms. Yeah, yeah. And talk about fresh, right? So like freshly churned and then it, just nothing else added in it. Yeah. So a lot of the cheeses here, it's nebulous territory, yeah. but I would say, let's go ahead and let's just grab some of this goat cheese. Yeah. That stuff's good. I'm, I'm kind of lactose intolerant, so I'm sensitive to certain cheeses, but goat cheese, my stomach handles uh, pretty well, actually. So. That's, ex yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. It's just heard it from someone that's yeah. not learning yeah. out of biochemistry, <laughs> even from a, just a basic, this feels good, this doesn't feel good. Yeah. Goat cheese is much easier on yeah, the gut. Yeah, much easier on the gut. All right. I wish I didn't have to buy a massive thing, but Dude, it, lasts, yeah. it lasts for a long yeah. time. Yeah, there's no way you could eat that whole thing and no. like, but like this doesn't expire until June <laughs> and I, it's marks the time of filming so I could leave this at the Airbnb and yeah, there you go. someone can benefit someone from it because I'll eat probably at least that whole log. Yeah. <laughs> I know someone's going to probably be wondering about butter. Yeah. I mean, absolutely an ancestral thing. We don't need uh, this much, but I definitely. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. And Costco did come out with their own version of it. Yeah, it's a little bit cheaper than the Kerrygold, but it's the same grass-fed butter. If you have the option, I would much rather go for ghee, uh, just because of the lower lactose content. I don't think they sell it here. They do sell it here? I don't. I think, I've never seen ghee at Costco. We'll take a, take a blast through some of the regular aisles here. But at Rosemary Mint Sauce, so probably not. Yeah, let's see what the sauce is. But I, I will say, like, lamb, Mutton on the highest omega-3 contents of any meat. Um, 
cane sugar. Oh yeah, we got a bunch of other crap potato. in there. Yeast oh. extract, canola oil. All right, that's a no go. <laughs> yeah. Sucks. Is, once Lamb you get shanks, into, come on. Like once you let's get, go. Like, you got to get people on board with like, you know, the right ingredients. <laughs> and don't get me wrong. Like I mean, Drew and I are both super big on like doing what works for you. And I don't want to make this video out to be like demonizing foods and making it so that it's unattainable. Yeah. I think our point is that if you simply live close to the earth, it's easy, yeah. it's basic, and this isn't designed to make it more complicated. This is actually designed to make it easier to show you that you actually, you just look for basic things. Like, yeah. like if it's got a bunch of garbage in it, simply don't get it. Uh, yeah. But Well, knowledge, knowledge is, is potential power, right? Like you have the knowledge and then now it's up to you to go to the store, it's called Costco, start reading these ingredients and, and you know, because oh. they watch your videos and they're educated and now it's up to them to make those decisions, you know, and apply it. It's cool that you said that because like knowledge is power, but knowledge can also be debilitating. Right? Yeah, you can not so. act on it too. <laughs> you can have the knowledge and not act on it. Or make it, uh, what, they call it, what I've been accused of multiple times, which is probably not incorrect is, <laughs> what's called orthorexic, where you're like so obsessed yes. with making things perfect that it becomes an eating disorder, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm just checking this out because I am a fan of coconut water, and especially this one, that's all it is, is Organic coconut water. Coconut, yes. But just keep in mind, it's got a lot of sugar in there. So why am I a fan of coconut water? I'm a fan of it if you are very active. <laughs> okay, electrolytes are great in it. The carbohydrate, like fructose, glucose combination in it is great for refueling if you are someone that is not strict keto. Yeah. So I would say that yes, it does play a role, that a lot of them have a bunch of additives. The thing I like about this Kirkland one is it is just organic coconut water. Yeah, super simple. Um, I just think again, it's something that is practical for living close to the earth. I certainly don't need that many sugars and in my life. on this so. island, you know, that's what like, you know, the, the natives have lived off coconut, you know, for, for centuries and because it's part of the land, you know? Uh, big yogurt guy. And I think that that is... Greek yogurt? Yeah, they've got, ooh, they've got, what do you the, think about they've got that? the good one. I am a big Greek yogurt fan, but it all depends. I'm much more of a fan. And like of, in the cheese category. Like it it's is. It's kind of, if you can find a clean, organic version of it. How's well, that like, one look? This one's, there's nothing added to it. It's just pasteurized, non-fat milk, live active cultures, streptococcus, firmopolis, uh, lactobacilli, bulgaricus, lactobacilli, acidophilus, bifidus, lactobacilli, KCA. So it's not, doesn't have the random. different language. I don't know what language that was, but. <laughs> <laughs> Again, if you can get raw yeah. yogurt, stuff like that, yeah. or a goat yogurt. Or kefir, or kefir. Kefir is even better. Yeah. Kefir is yeah. even better. Yeah. In fact, the documented research on kefir is head and shoulders above yogurt. Oh yeah. Yeah, much more concentrated probiotic effect. The only the only foods that can literally be classified as probiotics have been dairy foods. Yeah. Um, and it's probably just because of a lack of research, not because of, uh, you know, like kombucha, for example, is technically not considered probiotic. There's not, has not been enough documented peer reviewed evidence to demonstrate that it's considered oh, wow, additive really? to the gut flora, probiotic meaning adding to the gut flora. So um, again, this is something where like making use of the land, right? And this is organic, it's easy, it's my kids eat yogurt like it's going out yeah, of there's style. There's so many uses for it too, you know, it's just a flight, very versatile. It. Yeah, you can cook with it, you can substitute, you know, other things with it. Yeah, I, li I like it a lot. Sweet, we got some good honey. Ooh, nice. Yeah, yeah this here is, here we go. Check this out. In Hawaii. This is raw, organic, multi-floral honey. So even guys like that. Paul Saladino is eating honey now, right? It's yeah. awesome, it's, it's awesome to see, like Paul Saladino, love the dude he's he's over the top he's intense he's i just i love him for for that uh we disagree on some things but we actually agree on more things than people would think yeah he's been adding honey and fruit and you know honey could technically could arguably be carnivore because yeah. it's coming from an animal uh, um and it's high fructose content i'm absolutely gonna get this this looks like the creamy kind it's very creamy yeah you've had this? It, yeah it's way it's so good yeah, well the rest is gonna be going to you when okay. i leave so <laughs> yeah um, yeah because i know you're not gonna yeah, you could just raid the uh, Airbnb. Even that and the goat cheese, I think I'll, I'll, be I'll give you. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, we'll do a little fit to fat experiment. Yeah, right. <laughs> but on clean, clean foods, or <laughs> see how it goes. Fit to toilet experiment. Um, <laughs> now that's cool. All right, I'm gonna grab that just because this is awesome. And we'll talk and walk you because man, they're trying to close and we're here taking forever. So, rich in what's called. Uh, oh, look, they do have the ghee. Oh, they do actually. Okay, okay. Man, there's too many good things. 
between these two, a good thing. if I had to pick one, yeah. I'd pick the ghee. Okay, just because you're gonna have the butyrate, so it's gonna be a little bit better from this ancestral side of things. But macadamia nut oil is also one of the best monounsaturated fats that you could have. Palmitoleic acid is what it's called. And very beneficial. I did a video, so tremendous heart benefits, tremendous uh, anti-inflammatory effects. How do you use this? How do you take a sip of it? Do you cook so with it? You don't want to cook with it too much. Even yeah. though it's a stable oil, it's a monounsaturated, so it'll break down. Okay. Uh, but it's a drizzling oil. So mm -hmm. it's like yeah, yeah. after you, you make a salad dressing with it or something like that, it's probably about the best salad dressing oil you could ever have. Ghee, you can cook with, you can adulterate the heck out of. Very stable. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get this macadamia oil simply yeah. because because you're here. It's pretty cool and I, it's good content. <laughs> yeah. And I want to support local as much as I can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. This one, sardines, olive oil, salt. Yeah. Okay. We're getting the omega threes oh, and plus so the, good. these are the best. Okay. Talk about, again, ancestral way of living. What would you catch? Troll cut, line cut, and net cut. But do you prefer bones and skins versus skinless, boneless? Like, well, is that a huge, is that you're missing out certain dude, Good question. Yeah. Good question. Let's see if they have on the anchovies. Oh yeah, the anchovies, yeah, yeah. So the anchovies, I'm glad you brought that up. Those don't taste as good. So here's, they've got the wild planet ones, yeah. which are going to be... An extra virgin olive oil. Ooh, some natural smoke flavoring too. Yeah. Based on the image, I'm gonna suggest that these are the skin, yeah, it would say skinless or boneless if it was, but it's not. So it's it's got the skin. It's got probably got the, but the bones are soft. Yeah, no, you totally. Right. That's where you get the vitamin D. Okay, that's what yeah. I mean. That's yeah. everything you talk about. I missed the eggs. I didn't see the eggs, but the eggs are going to be something rich in vitamin D too. Yeah. That I, I would have ideally grabbed. In fact, let's hit this aisle real okay. fast. This I. Uh, <laughs> The other day, paleo. I saw the most beautiful flowering mac and cheese tree. Really? And I mean, it was just like, yeah. I took my machete that I was carrying with me <laughs> and I started hacking off some of the chunks of macaroni. It's so good. And I just, I so ate it. So good when it touches your lips. It's so Sitting good. Sitting under the shade. It's so good. <laughs> and like, when it gets really hot out, the trees start to melt. And the, uh, oh man, it's great. Oh, dude, these are really good. Have you had any of these? What? The, the one that is monk fruit. I don't know if monk fruit. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's sweetened with monk fruit. It's uh, iced tea. Um, it's a local brand. And they brew oh, hibiscus tea and what's the other tea? Um, there's um, pineapple mint and mango hibiscus. Yeah, you know, all these ones. Macadamia oh. popcorn. Is that what the ones you were looking for? Okay, now we got plenty. The coconut milk chocolate ones. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not what you want. Oh, here we go. Macadamia nuts. Honey roasted. Oh, here we go. Hawaiian sea salt. Perfect. Oh, there you go. There you go. Nice. Good eye. Exactly. Good eye, Thomas. So, look at the carb content on that. Four grams total, two grams fiber, so two grams net. Dry they're easy to overeat, though. I will say that. They're, they're really... Dude, so, you just got to be careful. <laughs> I'm almost... I'm, I'm literally not going to get these for that reason. They're amazing, <laughs> but I will, I will eat that yeah, whole bag. Dude and it'll be a problem, but I want to make sure I found those. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's go check out. I'll send you home with some stuff. Right. <laughs> Towards the end there, they were totally rushing us out of there. They were like closing in aisle by aisle, like pushing us out, squeezing us out. But the good news is we got to leave just in time for a beautiful Kona sunset, which is pretty awesome. It was awesome to see Drew. It was awesome to get some good stuff. The only thing I missed that I absolutely would have gotten was the eggs, because they have some really good pasture-raised eggs at Costco. And uh, again, trying to live as close to the earth as possible. That's how you do it. As always, I'll see you tomorrow.